Everyone wants to live an inspired life, yet so many people search for happiness following the footsteps of peers and taking advice from people who have different values and outcomes to which they're searching. There are people born into wealth, graduated from the best universities in the world, and there are people who have none of that and yet are living extraordinary lives full of fulfillment and reward. The purpose of this podcast is to share insights and strategies that allow you to question the status quo and think freely, so you can design your life and be who you want to be. We get one life. Time is our most valuable asset. I believe that when we're free and able to focus on meaningful work, we become better human beings. This is Always Free, and I'm your host, Jason Greystone. Welcome to the leading podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. You can connect with Jason on social media and subscribe to the Jason Greystone YouTube channel for weekly videos. Don't forget to also subscribe to the weekly newsletter to receive frequent educational content and action steps to help you design your life so you can be who you want to be. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongreystone.com. Well, 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 welcome back to the podcast, guys. I hope you had a nice week so far. Welcome to Always Free. This is the number one podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. And if this is the first time you're listening, make sure you go back to episode one and start listening there. You're going to get the most out of this podcast, believe me, if you start there. And if you're not new and you're an avid listener, welcome back. I appreciate you being here if you haven't already shown the love for the show, which you must love it if you're still here. This is episode 85 uh, or 84. Um, it doesn't matter really, but you're still here into the 80s. We're going for 100. And if, you, if you're here this long, make sure you just go and let me know that you're listening still by going over to iTunes and giving us a little review. That would be much appreciated. So in this episode I wanted to do something different because I spent a long time yesterday being interviewed for podcasts and um, I set up a whole day where I was dedicating back to back one hour sessions to be interviewed and they started at eight in the morning and they finished at seven at night so I was talking for 11 hours solid being interviewed by people and answering questions and talking and my throat hurt a bit, but it it allowed me to really, really kind of get my message out to to many people at once, and I thought it was a great thing to do. Um, and as and when those podcasts come out on my social media, I'll be sharing those if you want to go and check those out because there was a a range of different hosts. So depending on the angle, I was covering um, topics, my insights, my my strategies, my advice. Uh, which is it, it kind of had a different spin. So if you want to check those out, be sure to follow my social media. But this, because I'd done so much of that talking about wealth creation, um, I thought I would do a, something slightly different. And I want to talk about successful people, okay? Because or, or wealthy people, people who have success, people who uh, you can aspire to be like, you know, people who have things that you want and have results that you want, successful people. And what I want to talk about is what I've witnessed from working with so many successful people uh, in my life so far. And because I'm obsessed with kind of stats and metrics and projections and uh, research, I've I tend to study people a bit closely, and uh, and I want to give you some insights in what I think are seven of the things that the most successful people do, so that you can listen to that, take it on board, and maybe you're doing some of these things already, and maybe you're not. But these are what I've witnessed for the people who have real success. And the, the wealthy people, you know, things that wealthy people do, things that other successful people do. This is what they do. These are what I've noticed that all of them do these things. And before I get into that, I just want to, you know, kind of reiterate that success to me is deliberately working at something that you you choose to do because you love it. That's success, whether you're working at becoming a, a great mum or a dad or whether you're working at becoming a dancer or a musician or whether you're working on Um, becoming financially independent or you're building wealth whatever it is that you love and enjoy doing and you're deliberately working towards it that is success and and I'm going to explain why that's success at the end of this so point one 
is the, the first thing that I've noticed that the real successful people do is they all have long time horizons, okay? And what I mean by that is that they're able to think a long time into the future. They think far into the future, and the further they think into the future, the more poised they remain, okay? And like if, a great, great, um, a great example of this is it's got to be Elon Musk, right? We all know who Elon Musk is. The guy's thinking about interstellar travel, and he knows full well that he won't even be alive to see some of his goals coming, like play out. So, but he's thinking that far ahead, and what that means is. When you're thinking so far ahead, you don't let the day-to-day kind of distract you, right? He's not worried about a negative tweet on Twitter. He's not worried about someone, you know, moaning at him on on Twitter or, you know, when they threw the stone at his car, when he had his car on the stage, his new Tesla um, tank thing, and they threw the the stone and it smashed and he just said, oh, doesn't matter, we'll replace it. It doesn't really get to him because he's he's thinking much bigger, much. He's got he's got such a, a long term time horizon to where this is where this is going, and it also means that he doesn't have a uh, you know he doesn't have a time pressure, okay? Because the more you commit to the process rather than some time based pressure, it will allow your mind to engage properly. And it will, it will now enable your brain to actually work properly to get the required result in the first place. And also, the, the longer people can think into the future, you'll find it's directly correlated to their income. So whether they're thinking a year ahead, 10 years ahead, 100 years ahead, you'll see that the more visionary they are and the longer the time horizons are, the more they earn. Right. So a boss might be thinking five years into the future, a a, a, a president might be thinking 10, 15 years, 20 years into the future. A visionary, a true visionary is thinking 50 to 100 years into the future, right? They're, they're, they're thinking way, way ahead. And you'll find that the income is directly correlated to the amount that they can see into the future as well. So that's the first point. And the second point is almost linked, but it's having a bigger mission, a bigger cause. So Naturally, the further you can look into the future, the further you can think about that longer term time horizon. And by the way, think about weight loss, you know, just weight loss. People who try to lose weight in week one don't have the results that people who are trying to lose weight sustainably long term, right? Because they build it into a lifestyle. But the next point is people have a bigger mission. So almost linked to that they have a bigger cause. And, and a great way to think about this, and you can probably relate, is every day I go to the gym and a couple of times a week I go for a run. And every time I go running, I don't want to go. You know, the first kilometer is spent kind of talking myself into why I should just stop and do it next week or tomorrow or just give out or just do 3K instead of 5 or 10, you know. And that's every single time pretty much that I go for a run. Now, there's been times where I've done charity events where I, I ran for the Chestnut Tree House. We ran 1,100 kilometers, and it was so much easier. Because the cause was beyond me and the mission was beyond me, it made it so much easier I didn't even think about it. I, I wasn't talking myself out of it at all because I was doing it for something that was so greater, so much greater, and had so much more meaning than just me that it just made it easier. So if you can align your goal or your vision or where you want to be to to a bigger cause, a bigger mission, you're going to find that you just won't get as distracted day to day. And the most successful people that I've worked with, they all have a big mission. The next thing I've noticed in them is they don't, they, they, they take responsibility for everything. Okay. And I'm not talking about like they fail to delegate because they're absolute masters at delegation. I'm talking about they just take responsibility for the situation they find themselves in and the good and the bad is all of their responsibility and they don't blame people. The whole time you blame people and judge people is is basically saying to yourself that you you don't have those traits or you don't do anything wrong when in actual fact you do do things wrong. And if you're blaming someone, one it's not going to get you anywhere. You're not going to solve anything by blaming someone, but it's far better to just take responsibility of everything that goes on in your life because you won't be disappointed. 
you won't be disappointed at people if you're if you've got expectations of someone um, and you're allowing they don't meet those expectations you're going to allow that to cause some kind of emotional thing that's going to just be a inefficiency to your to your life and that's not what successful people do they think about how they can get round or overcome and they take responsibility and every time that there's you know a moment where there's a challenge they're not thinking oh why has this happened they're thinking what can we do to get round it you know and and that's unanimous throughout all successful people that I know the next thing is they plan goals. They don't just set goals, okay? So it's great having a big mission or a big cause and long-term time horizons, but they actually plan the goals. So it's not just some pipe dream. And you've heard me say before, whatever we plan, we get, okay? And that's true. If you've planned a barbecue, you've got the barbecue. If you've planned a holiday, you've gone on the holiday. If you've planned a party, you've done the party. And the difference is between, you know, setting goals and planning goals is is planning goals is actually writing down the step-by-step process that you're going to do to get to the goal and when you do that it is <laughs> inevitable that you're going to hit the goal so the successful people that I know they have strategies and they they chunk down their goals and they have best practices and strategies that allow them to chump away at those goals those tiny little chunk down to do's to inevitably reach a goal and along the way, they have contingency plans and they have forfeits, you know, and accountability and they have habits and rituals. And if something works and they like it, they do it over and over again instead of trying to chase a shiny object and switching and changing it up. They stick to what they know and to what works. So plan your goals. Don't just set goals. Think about planning your goals. The next one is leverage. They use leverage, okay? And they use it in multiple ways. They use it, obviously, leveraged assets. So they, they develop assets. They leverage their time via delegations and systems and automations and um, processes that they put in place. So they're leveraging their time. They're leveraging their time. They're leveraging their money through um, investments and assets. And they're also leveraging using their influence. They're, they're, they're being paid more because of the influence they've had. They get buy-in from people. They get people on board with their mission because they've got a big mission. People want to be part of that. So they use that influence to get people on board so that they can attract more talent. And that's leverage. So they're constantly thinking about you know, thinking and working smart instead of hard. The next one that is totally unanimous as well is they all have mentors. Every successful person I know has a mentor or two or three uh, big mentors in their life that play a big part in their life. I have mentors. I've always dedicated 10% of my income on self-development and I've always had mentors. And I'm not just talking about mentors that you listen to or watch on YouTube. I'm talking about they have direct access to people who have results that they want in some way, okay? Because they know that it shaves off so much time off of the journey and gives them an upper hand and gets them to where they want to be 10, 20 times quicker than it would take them kind of searching around and going through videos on YouTube and all the rest of it. Every successful person I know has mentors and every successful person's mentors has mentors. So mentors is the next point. And then the final point, which is the most important point of all, is action. They all take action. They just do it, right? They have accountability to do it. They jump off the bridge and do it. They they suit up and jump off the cliff. They just do it. And one of my best quotes that came from one of my oldest mentors when I was about 18 years old, Mr. George Turnbull, he said to me, to be in business, you have to be in business. And I'm telling you, that is what it's all about. You can't learn or grow and fail and adapt and learn unless you're actually doing it. And action is the cure for a low self-worth, for overwhelm, for self-doubt. Action means that things can only get better once you're doing it. That's what it means. And I often think back to when I was at school and there was some verbal bullying going on, right? And I remember being so tormented by the verbal bullying, I just wanted them to hit me. I wanted them to throw a punch so that we would be in the fight right? Because not knowing and, and be, you know, kind of winding myself up about it and working myself up about the mental side of it, 
I just wish we could get into a fight. And then once we got into the fight, I knew it would only get better from that point. And I knew it would probably be the means to an end. And it's very similar in business. You just want to get in with it and muck in and get your hands dirty because the moment you do that, trust me, it's going to be better. And you're, your self-worth is going to raise, your overwhelm is going to dissolve, your self-doubt is going to dissolve, and you're going to be making progress. But you just have to take action. Don't look up to people. Don't think that everyone isn't just making it up as they go along because they are. Richard Branson's got problems. He's just working it out and making it up as he goes along. Elon Musk is going the same way, making it up as he goes along. I'm making it up as I go along. I'm learning every single day and so is every single person. No one has got it together. Everyone is human. So take action and watch your problems dissolve. So that's it long time horizons big mission don't take responsibility and don't blame plan your goals use leverage get a mentor and take action those seven things are going to lead you to having a phenomenal life if you can implement those into your life i hope this has been of value to you guys we're going to be back next week with another episode and until then take care have a great easter and rest of your weekend and i'll see you then Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongreystone.com.